Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church, located in Charlotte, North Carolina. St. Mark's is a historic congregation of the ELCA that unconditionally welcomes all people of all ethnicities, genders, identities, and backgrounds. There's a place for you at St. Mark's. We are conveniently located in Myers Park on Queens Road, just south of Charlotte's Uptown and adjacent to the Duke Mansion and the greenery of Edge Hill Park. St. Mark's Church building is easy to find with its marble Christus Victor, while inside, the mid-century design of the sanctuary reaches upward, inspiring us with Christ's blessing and beautiful stained glass windows featuring all the people of God in all their diversity. There is a place for you at St. Mark's.
Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church. Today on the third Sunday after Pentecost, Jesus calls all who do God's will his family. By grace, we are all members of the household of God, members of Jesus' family. A warm welcome to any visitors who are worshiping with us this morning. Your presence among us is a blessing to us. I have some sad news to share with the congregation. Carl Seppmeyer, whose name has been on our prayer list for some years now, and the father of Eileen Dunlap, passed away early Friday morning. Uh, we, give th we will be giving thanks for Carl's life and the prayers this morning, and would ask that you remember Eileen and the extended Seppmeyer and Dunlap families in your prayers. June is the Instruments of Praise Month. Every week we have a, a different instrumentalist uh, helping accompany us and giving praise and joy to our worship service. And today we want to thank James Churchill for being with us. Thank you for sharing your gift of music with us this morning, James. Finally, for those of you who have been joining us online and have never been to St. Mark's before, I would encourage you to join us at, for worship at 8.30 or 10.30 in person, or email us or call us in the church office that we might be able to connect with you and get to know you. We've come to worship our Lord. Let us quiet our hearts now as we prepare for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance and remembering the waters of holy baptism, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and forgive and feed us for the life of the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. All-powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is that? What is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, in order that you may be feared. With for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning, more than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast Second reading is from 2 Corinthians 
chapter 4, verses 13 through chapter 5, verse 1. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with the scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will, also, will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake. So that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of the Lord. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Has anyone ever said to you, are you out of your mind? Have you taken complete leave of your senses? It seems like it happens to me all the time. <laughs> Pastor, you, are you out of your mind? We don't do things that way around here. Or, Pastor, we've never done that before. Are you sure? It happened when I served as a missionary in Japan. The words and language were a little different. It began usually, Mackenzie Sensei, or Pastor Mackenzie. You're American, and you don't un understand the way we do things. I've often found out that this is used by folks who don't want the pastor to rock the boat too much. It's happened every place I've served, and I don't think I'm particularly a, a person who upsets the canoe. Pastor, 
you're new here. Pastor, you're not from around here. That's not how we do things around here. In other words, pastor, don't rock the boat. Pastor, don't challenge the status quo. Jesus was rocking the boat in his small community. And people were starting to talk. The neighbors were starting to talk. And Jesus' family perhaps felt a bit embarrassed. His family was getting annoyed because they couldn't even eat in peace and quiet. Jesus was out in front of the house with the crowd and his family went outside to restrain him because people were starting to say he has gone out of his mind. We remember him when he was small. He was such a quiet boy. And now look at he's he's welcoming all kinds of people. Have you seen the people he eats with? Sinners, outcasts, prostitutes, tax collectors, all these transgressors and sinners gathered in front of our house. It's embarrassing. What will the neighbors say? He's gone out of his mind. The word that's used, that verb that describes uh, he's gone out of his mind means insane or mad. But it literally means to stand outside of oneself. And I think our English phrase, uh, taking leave of our senses, is probably the best way to describe it. In other words, having that out-of-body experience in which you seem like someone else to, to the folks who know you. And so, thinking that Jesus was insane or possessed, the family called the scribes from Jerusalem to come down and assess Jesus, to do what today we would call an intervention on Jesus. Yeah, right. Like you can do an intervention on Jesus. <laughs> the scribes said he is possessed by Beelzebul. He's possessed by Satan. This, of course, in general terms, is a stock answer that we, too, give when we don't like something or someone. We call them crazy, evil people. Of course, it's easy to see through this sort of verbal trickery. Jesus was not insane, nor was he possessed by Satan. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit that had descended upon Jesus at his baptism, the Spirit that had driven him into the wilderness to be tempted, was now leading him in ministry. And people were beginning to talk. The same Spirit leads us in our ministry because the same Spirit is given to us in our baptisms. And we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Indeed, this font that I have been pointing to every Sunday since Pentecost, in the shape of a dove, reminds us that the Spirit is always above us, leading us, around us, dwelling in us, and seeking to guide our lives and our church's mission. As a church, we welcome all God's children as members of our church family. The outcast, the sick, the struggling, the addicted, the oppressed, the weak, those who are seen as unclean or different, or even in some eyes, evil people. We call all people members of God's family. For that is what we have been called, for we are each forgiven sinners. Each of us are sinful people who know the forgiveness and joy of Jesus. Indeed, that's what brings us into this holy space again each Sunday so that we might feel joy and renewal, so that we might lay those burdens aside that we are carrying or that we might seek the leading of God's Spirit in our lives. We are to welcome others as Jesus has welcomed us. Pastor, are you out of your mind? This is what people continually say when I preach God's love for all people. Jesus commands his followers to love as he has loved us. Yet in our world, in our nation, in our communities, we continue to be a house divided, using Jesus' words. All of us know that those words are profoundly important in American history. In 1858, running for Illinois State Senator, Abraham Lincoln made effective use of this biblical passage. 
saying about America, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Lincoln said America cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. And Lincoln did not expect the nation to remain permanently divided. Like a prophet, Lincoln said that our national house would eventually become one or the other. Eventually, we would either be possessed by a spirit of freedom and welcome for all people, or we would eventually be enslaved by a spirit of division and enmity. Looking at the state of the world today, I wonder what Abraham Lincoln would think about today's household of humanity. Our world continues to divide the household of humanity more than I can ever remember in my own lifetime. I'm sure there are those who have a longer memory than me who can remember other times when the world was more divided. But I have never seen among the nations, communities, religions, and churches such division and polarization. Jesus' words continue to hold up a mirror to the sinful and divided state of humanity in this nation and around this world. Jesus, in this passage today, recognized the insular and dividing nature of families, of religions, and nations. The one who said, for God so loved the world looked at the crowd on his family doorstep, on his home's front step, and said, here is my family. God loves you. One of Jesus' sayings that is often misunderstood is the so-called sin against the Holy Spirit. All of us have heard it, and perhaps we scratch our heads and are a bit mystified by it. It's not that complicated. It simply means speaking against or denying the voice of the Holy Spirit. The sin of the scribes, and it's described that way in today's gospel, you know that they said it's because that Jesus said this, because the scribes had said he has an unclean spirit. And so the sin of the scribes was that they called good evil and evil good. They denied the spirit. They called Jesus' spirit-led gospel of love and the acceptance of sinful people evil. So Jesus said it is unforgivable to call the good things of the Holy Spirit evil. And yet this is what humanity continues to do every day. I see it and hear it around me all the time. The voices of nationalism around the world that are rising, that call neighboring nations evil, and then invade and attack their neighbors. Voices of nationalism and partisanship in this nation that call one another evil, pointing their fingers at one another. Voices of so-called Christians who withhold love and acceptance from others because of their ethnicity, nationality, gender, identity, or culture, calling them and treating them as unclean and evil. Jesus responds to his family and his scribes and the scribes' hardness of heart by saying, who are my mother and my brothers? Who is my family? And looking at the crowd gathered on his doorstep, Jesus said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Think about that. Jesus overcomes the sin of limiting the Holy Spirit to, over, to only one family or one community or one nation or one political party or even one religion. In calling all people his family, Jesus is seeking to unite the household of humanity rather than to divide it. For God so loved the world. Pastor, are you out of your mind? We can't have those people in this church. Believe it or not, since I've been here, I've heard that a number of times. It's often said in more polite and subtle ways, but that's what it means. 
And if I've heard it once, I've heard it enough that if I had a dollar for each time, I might not be a rich man, but I could probably go out and have lunch. <laughs> Yet we welcome all who gather at the door of this house, those seeking God's blessing and those seeking to do God's will. Throughout the week, many of you are doing what you need to do in work or in uh, your various commitments and your families and your community. But when someone comes to the door of this church during the week, and it happens frequently, a father and a child in need of food or someone in need of someone to listen to or pray with, it's your pastor who responds to them and welcomes them from the doorstep of this church into God's house because they come to this place seeking God's will, seeking God's care. Throughout the week, we welcome so many people into this building, not only on Sunday morning. We have five different AA-related groups that meet in this building throughout the week, probably close to 200 people. You just think about that number. Gathering in this church, AA and SLAA, for something that is life-giving and giving them back their freedom from addiction. We welcome the hungry and the homeless. We welcome you whether you are young or, or old, gay or straight, rich or poor, no matter your skin color or your complexion or your ethnic background. We welcome you because all God's children are welcome in this place. All God's children are baptized in this font and bathed in the water of salvation and forgiven and welcome into God's family. And so in today's gospel, Jesus says, you are all my family, my beloved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever does the will of God is my brother, sister, and mother. But pastor, are you out of your mind? We know that family comes first. Church comes first. You know, I grew up in a church not different from St. Mark's. I grew up in a church that had a long storied past, a church that founded Augustana Hospital in Chicago, that founded Augustana Seminary in Rock Island, Illinois. The founding date of that school is used for the founding date of LSTC in Chicago. It's a school, it's a church that has a wonderful past. And I've been, I've heard the many stories of St. Mark's, and there are members here who, who came from the old location on North Tryon Street, who have long history at this church, and I can identify with you of being a member of a church with a long history. But a church is always living into its future, led by the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit to be the voice and hands of Jesus present in this world, welcoming all people today, and living into the Spirit of the future that the Spirit is, live, that is guiding us into. At times, I get tired of the struggle, but when I feel drained by the evil and dividing voices and actions of this world, I do not lose heart. As Maddie read a moment ago in the reading from 2 Corinthians, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. I remember words that my father spoke to me who was a, my father as many of you know was a retired was a lutheran pastor and when i was a young man beginning seminary my dad said to me tim the danger of this work of being a christian in this world and of working in the church is cynicism the danger is thinking that the holy spirit is not alive in your work in your life or in your church as a church and as individuals and as a nation, we can become cynical and jaded. We can think that's just the way things are. I'm not going to rock the boat. We think that our lives and our work may be of little meaning or consequence, and so we are tempted to call good evil and evil good. We are tempted to go along with the flow of the world and society, not to rock the boat, but to get along and just keep quiet, keep your head down and work, and not preach the gospel of God's love for all people. And so the Holy Spirit continues to guide us and nudge us 
we are building God's house, not with human hands, but with the power of the Holy Spirit. God loves this world. God loves all people that call upon him and seek to do his will. God has no hands in this world but your hands. God has no family in this world but you. You are God's family in this world. Always called to welcome others into ever-widening circles of friendship around Christ's church. God so loved the world. Let him love the world through you. Amen. Together with the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us be together in prayer. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and the world. Lord God, as we go about our daily lives, help your church to see the world through the eyes of Jesus. Help us to refrain from focusing on what may be unfair in our lives. Lead us toward putting the needs of others before our own selfish desires. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Creator God, your presence is revealed in the shade of trees, the growth of seeds into flowers, and in plants providing food for our tables. 
bring healing to lands and communities scarred by pollution, deforestation and disasters, both natural and human made. Teach us to cultivate the earth with reverence that all may know your abundance. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for peace, especially in Ukraine, Israel in Gaza, Somalia, Sudan, and many other nations around the world affected by war and international conflict. Protect innocent civilian whose, civilians whose lives are upended and destroyed in these conflicts. Open the minds of all who lead and guide lawmakers, judges, and elected officials toward ending war, oppression, and discrimination. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Comforting God, hear the prayers of all who cry out to you from the depths of fear, despair, or hopelessness. Comfort the sick and dying, and bless all who care for them. Grant grace and peace to our church family, Elaine, Harry, Mark, Patty, Jared, Julie, Gray, Jetty, Angie, Linda, Drew, Norma, Laura, Jean, Ken, Tanner, Christopher, Eileen, Danny, Mindy, Louisa, Ben, Tina, Martha, Ingrid, Shirley, Jimmy, Roxy, Bill, Sergey, Arlene, Oku, David, Danielle, Rachel, Joseph, Virginia, David, and Jay. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord God, as we move into summer, and for many a somewhat slower pace, remind us to take a break when we can. Grant us rest from our labors, the time to enjoy the outdoors and night skies, and renewed energy. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Eternal God, we praise you that Christ prepares a place for us at the table in your kingdom. We offer you thanks for the life and witness of Elaine Dorton, wife of Edwin Dorton. Welcome Elaine into the blessedness of your eternal kingdom, and may she share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Strengthen and comfort the extended Dorton family with the sure and certain hope of the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Eternal God, we praise you that Christ prepares a place for us at the table in your kingdom. We offer you thanks for the life and witness of Carl Seppmeyer, father of Eileen Dunlap. Welcome Carl into the blessedness of your eternal kingdom and may he share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Strengthen and comfort the extended Seppmeyer and Dunlap families with the sure and certain hope of the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with one another.
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his, to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to live in the world with the power of your love. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, you are the body of Christ.
Thanks be to God. Please join us for worship at 8.30 or 10.30 a.m. on Sundays with inspiring music and talented musicians as we gather around God's Word and celebrate the sacraments together. We are a congregation that helps children, youth, and families grow together in Christ with events for children and youth, a confirmation program, educational activities, mission trips, and retreats to camps like Luther Ridge that help young people and families grow in faith and service to others. St. Mark's is a place for families and people of all generations to grow together in Christ. St. Mark's is a church with a servant's heart. Each Thursday, St. Mark's Soup Kitchen feeds our neighbors. We also partner with local schools and nonprofit organizations. We participate in Kairos Prison Ministry Weekends, sending cookies as a sign of our love. We follow Jesus in mission, offering food, shelter, and hope to those in need. And we are blessed by local artists, musicians, and ecumenical relationships. There's a place for you at St. Mark's. Please join us for worship and stay with us to serve Jesus Christ by helping others discover God's amazing grace. For more information about worship and service opportunities, please visit us at stmarkscharlotte.org. There is a place for you at St. Mark's. May the peace of Christ be with you. <laughs>